When remarkable data collides with open questions, curiosity becomes the only sensible response. Brian Keating welcomes Avi Loeb, an astrophysicist known for bold hypotheses and meticulous data, to discuss what new images from Mars orbiters may reveal about the interstellar visitor called 3i Atlas. Today is special because the object comes unusually close to Mars and orbiters can look. Avi explains, a picture is worth a thousand words, and we are about to get images of 3i Atlas that are the best resolution ever. High-resolution imaging science experiment, HiRISE, can reach roughly 30 kilometers per pixel at the expected distance, and that resolution may finally constrain the nucleus size. Why does size matter? Avi lays out the kinematics. He and collaborators analyzed over 4,000 observations and concluded, we found no difference whatsoever, meaning that we can put a very tight limit on any non-gravitational acceleration. In other words, the object follows gravity-dominated motion, suggesting it is extremely massive. The numbers are striking. Based on recoil expected from the observed outgassing, the absence of measurable acceleration implies a mass potentially exceeding 33 billion tons. For solid density, that corresponds to a nucleus larger than 5 kilometers across. If confirmed, that scale would be orders of magnitude larger than prior interstellar visitors. But size is only part of the puzzle. Spectroscopy from JWST reveals a coma dominated by carbon dioxide, with water contributing only about 4% of the mass budget. Avi stresses this contradicts early expectations. Many astronomers assumed a water-rich comet, but the data say otherwise. Structural oddities deepen the mystery. Hubble images show an elongated jet pointing toward the sun that is about 10 times longer than it is wide. Avi calls this feature an anomaly because standard solar system comets tend to produce tails away from the sun, not forward-facing jets. Light polarization adds another diagnostic. Avi explains, polarization is the least understood form of all the light properties and measurements show unusually negative polarization, roughly minus two to minus two and a half percent. That level is extreme compared to known comets, and it encodes geometry and composition information that is not yet explained. Chemical makeup raises further questions. Ground-based spectra indicate a high nickel to iron ratio in the plume, a pattern more reminiscent of industrial nickel alloys than typical cosmic dust. Avi poses the question directly, could this be a technosignature? He cautions that current data do not prove technology, but they demand explanation. Timing and trajectory are also anomalous. The incoming path of 3i Atlas lies within 5 degrees of the ecliptic plane, an alignment that has a tiny probability if interstellar arrivals are random. It also passes near Mars, Venus, and Jupiter in a way that has favored observation, an unlikely sequence that helps astronomers gather data right now. A striking coincidence surfaced recently. The arrival direction is within about 9 degrees of the famous 1977 WOW signal. Avi notes the probability is low, about six-tenths of a percent, and he urges radio observatories to monitor the object for narrowband emissions, including near the hydrogen hyperfine line. Avi is explicit about methodology. He argues for evidence-driven work and for independent verification, writing, I submitted a white paper to the United Nations suggesting to establish an international organization that will attend to this possibility for all future interstellar objects. He wants coordinated observations and clear international protocols. That is where in situ imaging from Mars orbiters matters. High rise brightness of the brightest pixel could yield a tight constraint on surface area and therefore size, assuming reasonable albedo. The Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, JUICE, MAVEN, ExoMars Instruments, and other craft could add color, stereo, and ultraviolet context. If the object is natural and large, it challenges production rates of such bodies in interstellar space. If it is engineered, different signatures would be expected. Deliberate maneuvers, radio transmissions, excess thermal emission, or structured surfaces. Avi emphasizes testing each hypothesis against observations, not preconceived labels. 
The Galileo project exemplifies that approach. Avi describes it as an effort to build observational infrastructure, including multi-site optical arrays to triangulate trajectories, and invites public participation. He stresses that science benefits from transparency and broad data sharing rather than gatekeeping. Finally, the stakes matter because even low probability events can have high consequence. Avi invokes Pascal-like reasoning. Anomalies with tiny odds but huge implications deserve careful study. Whether 3i Atlas proves to be a conventional comet, an exotic natural body, or something else entirely, the correct scientific response is the same. Collect data, coordinate globally, and let the evidence lead. In the weeks to come, images from Mars orbiters and coordinated spectroscopy will tell us more. For now, the episode is a vivid lesson in how modern astronomy couples serendipity with disciplined inquiry, and how one object can force scientists, policymakers, and the public to consider new questions about our place in the cosmos. Brian Keaton closes the conversation thanking Avi Loeb for a thoughtful, data-first approach and for urging an international framework to evaluate interstellar visitors. The work continues, and the best outcome will be clarity, whatever the explanation turns out to be.